Hey guys, welcome back. So, as a Hare Krishna for 15 years, I had a relationship with Jesus Christ, but it wasn't the right kind of relationship that I needed. Now I see this looking back. As a Hare Krishna, I was reading the Bible. The entire time, 15 years, I was reading the Bible along with the Hare Krishna scriptures. Because the Hare Krishnas believe that the Bible is an inspired word of God. It is from God. They'll quote that verse in the Bible that says that all scripture is God breathed, right? And they believe that that means the Bible and all their scriptures as well, even the Quran. So, but they think that the Hare Krishna scriptures are way more superior in their knowledge than the Bible. So while I was a Hare Krishna devotee, a devotee of Krishna, I was reading the Bible uh, as I was reading their scriptures, right? So they have tons and tons of books, right? Probably like a hundred books or more. And I read pretty much 95, 96% of them all over the 15 years, right? It took me many years to read all their scriptures. But at the same time, I was reading the Bible. So when I went to India, I went to India for a month. Uh, I went to Vrindavan. I went to Mayapur, the holy lands where Krishna supposedly walked and where the, they believe these lands are holy. I bathed in the Ganges River. By the way, check out my shirt. Brooklyn to Montauk. Center, Center Point Church. Some church I went to but out in Long Island. But, so I was reading... The Bible when I was in India, which is kind of interesting. And so as a Hare Krishna, I did have a relationship with Christ. I did have a relationship with the word of God, but it wasn't enough and it wasn't the right type. Okay. So I believed that I was Christian uh, when I was a devotee of Krishna. And, you know, like I said, I was reading the Bible. I was praying to Jesus. Now, not every day, right? But I would pray to Jesus and communicate with him. Um, and I was reading the Old Testament, New Testament, etc. I was also super obsessed with Revelation, the end times, the mark of the beast, all these things. And every Friday, I was actually teaching classes in the Hare Krishna temple about various topics, including Revelation and all these things. This is as a Hare Krishna. I'm not a Christian yet, right? I'm not converted. I don't understand the gospel, right? That was a key thing. So I believe that Jesus was my Lord and Savior, although I didn't quite... I wasn't quite right about what that meant. Okay. I remember I was uh, Hare Krishna living in the temple. And a friend of mine, Christian, who was Christian, he came to visit me. And I showed him all around. I showed him everything I was doing. Look what we're doing for God. You know, look at the, the practices we're doing and how, you know, the music we play for him and how we cook for him. You know, we constantly think about him all day. God, 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 you know. And he said, well, that's good, but, you know, you're not following Jesus. And that... That was like right to the heart. And of course I got offended and said, how dare you? How, how can you say I'm not following Jesus? You don't know my relationship to Jesus, right? I pray to him. He's my Lord and Savior. He's he's a Shakti Avesh avatar, right? They, I believed that he was an incarnation of God. He was a form of God coming down to earth. But he's not God himself, right? That's what they would say. So there's all those little technical things. So my friend told me that. And you know what? He was 100% right. Looking back, I did not have the relationship with Christ that I needed. My life was not built around Christ. Guys, my life was built around my guru. You got to understand, as a Hare Krishna, I wasn't just a minimal participant. I was hardcore. I was severe. All right. This was my whole life. I lived 10 years in a temple, in and out of different temples. Okay. I was a monk for maybe four months, like a proper monk where I shaved my heads, wore the robe, celibate lifestyle, on the streets, begging, chanting the names of God, giving out the books, right? Trying to convert people, living in the temple, cleaning, doing the menial work, sleeping on the floor, cold showers, up at 3 a.m., 4 a.m., hitting the cold floor of the temple, Dandavat, flat on my face, worshiping the deities for like an hour, singing, you know, the Brahma Mahorti hours right before sunrise, right? Then chanting my rounds on the beads for like two hours, trying not to fall asleep, you know, right? While the Bhakta leader is like stepping out of the room, like probably going to take a nap or something, you know what I'm saying? And, um, 
you know, I always thought that was curious as a, as a young devotee, like, well, you know, he's, he's the leader. He's supposed to be doing the practice and he's, he keeps sneaking out, you know, what's up with that? So, you know, I did all that stuff. Right. And then, you know, and then you do like an hour long scripture study where you listen and you're, and you're, you know, you're sitting on the floor Indian style or like laying on your face, like, or standing, you know? So, and playing the instruments and singing the songs and stuff. So, you know, I was doing all this stuff. Guys, Hare Krishna was my life and soul. I believed it. It was fact. It wasn't belief. It was just science to me. There was no question about reincarnation and all these things. And the deeper I got into it, the more I believed, right? It wasn't like that all the way off the bat. But, and I want to tell you guys a little kind of quick history of my spiritual journey. So I was raised Catholic. And I basically uh, always felt like there was, they didn't have enough answers for me. I always had too many questions. I remember hearing the preacher, or the priest rather, you know, read some small passage of scripture and then close the Bible. This is the word of God and then close the Bible. And I remember always feeling like, I want more. What does it say? Why did you close the Bible? I want to hear what it, what does it say? And then they would go on pontificating, right? So I'm not trying to say this to down Catholicism. This was my experience with it. Okay. They didn't have qu answers for my questions. I was thirsty for knowledge and they couldn't give it to me. Right. So I remember seeing the statues in the, in the Hare Krishna, uh, I'm sorry, in the Catholic church and thinking, I thought we're not supposed to have idols in the back of my mind. This was, and I, this is as a kid. Okay. There's many, many other things that I can go on, which I won't right now. Um, I remember just quickly that I remember the priest talking about, oh, you have to give to the poor. You have to give to the poor constantly give to the poor. And they're like, okay. But you know, at some point I'm thinking, isn't there other things we can do? Like, and I remember thinking, what about children? What about child abuse? Isn't that, a, isn't that a good thing to kind of like, shouldn't we help kids? And I was a young kid thinking this stuff, not knowing anything of the scandals in the church at the time, you know? So I believe that was all the Holy Spirit speaking to me. So, you know, and in Sunday school, I had lots of questions and they just went surface and they didn't, they didn't give me answers. So in high school, <clears throat> I met my first girlfriend and she was a born again Christian. And so I sort of dabbled in that. She brought me to a Bible study, uh, introduced me to her pastor. I went to the Bible study, honest, innocent, you know, and, and I had a lot of questions and, you know, to be upfront, my questions were kind of probing. And at that point I was you know, a little bit like agnostically inclined, right? My mind was thinking in that kind of direction. And the pastor told my girlfriend at the time, don't bring him back here. So, you know, that was kind of a lot for me as a, you know, I was like 14, 16. And so these people, these, these Christians, they never had any answers for me. Right. And I always had deep spiritual ponderings and questions about the meaning of life and God and right. And politics and all these different like deep subjects. I've always been a deep thinker. I've always been looking and searching for truth and reading books constantly. You know, I was reading Camus and in, in, uh, in high school and learning about the Holocaust and racism and, you know, all these deep topics. Right. Um, so then Basically, let's see. So then I went to college and I became agnostic. Um, really felt like, you know what? I don't know if there's a God. There might be. I don't really know. But, you know, these people don't know either. And they just can't be humble and say they don't know. But religion starts all the wars in the world. You know, so I want to stay away from religion. So that's how I was all through college. I got very into leftist politics. I became, you know, very, very lefty. Let's put it that way. And um, fighting racism, all these kind of things. Then in my senior year of college, I met my my other girlfriend, who was a Hare Krishna at the time. And basically, she showed me a picture of Krishna. I remember seeing this picture thinking, I can believe in God again. So it sort of opened me up. It opened me back up to uh, following God. Now, how I found Krishna is a whole other story. I'll get into that another time. There's a lot of details to it. But suffice to say that 
I went from that to, you know, being kind of interested and starting to read the books. And then, you know, we stayed together for like two years and then we broke up and then I stuck with the books and I kept reading and reading and reading. And I was really interested in the books. And so what happened with the books was they were giving me the answers that I always had that the Christians could never answer for me. So it makes sense logically why I became a Hare Krishna because I went in that direction because they gave me the answers. I was always looking for some sort of answers, right? Now, you know, why do people come to religion? Why do they come to God? It's partly because it's answering your questions, right? So in Hare Krishna, they have all the answers. They'll give you any answer to any question you can possibly think of, right? In the spiritual realm. Now, there are a few questions that they don't have answers to, but it's very few. What I realized later after becoming a Christian was it's not about, it's really not about the answers. God has revealed what he's revealed. There's things he's not shown us and that's okay. It's about a relationship to Christ. 